basically, uh, Janice and I, when we were first married, went to Disneyland the year after our honeymoon, and I loved what I saw, and I decided that someday I would do that. And it took decades to figure out how to do it and then to develop a market. And in we, we did it for many years. In 1992, we formed this company called Swatsky's Imagination Corporation. Generally, well, you have to decide what kind of theme park you're going to build. Are you going to build a miniature golf? Are you going to build, um, you know, an amusement park with rides? Is it going to be a, a play park? You know, what sort of thing do you want to build? And after that, uh, you generally pick a theme. So, uh, for example, the the park we're we're working on right now is is it's pirates, but it's pirates with a twist. You know, we've invented these creatures who are, uh, we call them gruffles, and they're, they're, uh, they're like good pirates, I guess. They only capture pirate ships. And, and uh, or maybe, uh, I think there was a pub we were working on. It was an old English pub, so we have a story about, you know, this pub owner who, who loves the fox hunt. And, so you, you build your story around that. So once you have your theme down, um, then, it's, then it's time to start sketching ideas and just, um, it's, you know, it's blue sky. You, you just work, start throwing ideas around until you get something you like and then do a little more sketching, maybe do, a, maybe do a, you know, an aerial view, take it to the client and see what they think. We use quite a variety of tools to develop our work. Some are very high-tech and some are what I would term old-fashioned. Basically, we start in a sketchbook with a, with a very quick sketch after we talk to our customer and just determine what, what it is they're looking for or what can we do for them. We then scan our sketchbook into the computer and work with very high-tech tools uh, using a digital drawing pad and stuff to create concept drawings. These are in turn, um, some are used to create uh, very fancy drawings or, or artwork that is, uh, we use CNC routers and other things like that. We just start with any type of steel frame. Generally everything we do is steel frame. There's no, we don't use a lot of wood uh, just for structural because we're putting a lot of concrete on it. So start with a basic steel frame, uh, a lot of square tubing. And then we use pencil rod to shape whatever feature we want to do. After you know, structure's done and the welding is done, then we attach the expanded metal lath to that, which has got to be the funnest job here. Then we apply the mud. And after the mud gets applied and sets a little bit, then we get to carve it. And after the carving stage comes the painting. Um, and the painting stage, which is usually what I do, gets three base coats and then a series of glazes, which adds texture and uh, depth to the piece. There's no real main job here. Uh, I am fortunate enough to be able to weld, wire, mud, and carve. Um, so I don't do a lot of the painting, um, but other than that, uh, Dan does the designs and we just go from there and uh, I'm lucky enough to be able to do most of the jobs that entails here I guess. I do some welding and <coughs> some tying on of the diamond lath and mostly mixing concrete for uh, an application of the concrete as well. We paint. We paint. I also trowel mud so I just put the mud onto the kilometer and warm up, but also mainly painting and yeah. And we both wire. We wire yes. oh. the mesh onto the steel structures. Too. Yes. We also do carving. Yes. Most people here do a little bit of everything. Like, there's like the guys who weld. So I mean, we don't weld and the guys don't paint because they're kind of sloppy. So <laughs> there's a couple of areas where we're segregated, but I mean, for the most part, everyone gets their hands and a little bit of everything. I'm a welder. I weld a lot of the structures for all of the pieces, like you got behind it, behind the camera. TJ, I'll send to show you the thing. The uh, for the pieces. Currently, I'm welding a the gate for the Trinidad project. 
We primarily use three mediums to create our work. One would be um, high density urethane, which we uh, carve, some by hand, some using um, our CNC router. We also uh, use um, a sculpting epoxy, which is all handwork, uh, typically in a fairly small scale and, and with a fair amount of detail. And then our larger pieces are done using fiberglass reinforced concrete over welded steel armatures. Uh, our last project was at Cultus Lake here in British Columbia, and that project we worked hand in hand with the owner who acted as a general contractor. Our job was to design basically everything that people see and interact with except for the rides. In, in those cases, uh, ride manufacturers do those, but uh, we start by writing a story. What is the story about? And then every element that we build tells that story. Uh, some guests may realize what the story is, others don't. They just know it's a fun place. But because we're relating everything back to a story, everything ties together very carefully and everything works together uh, so it's not um, disjointed. It's very cohesive in this theme. Okay, our current project is in Trinidad. Uh, a very exciting project. It's, it's a whole theme park. Um, Good size for us, not overly large, two and a half acres. Um, includes a train, uh, bumper boats, uh, climbing wall, which is um, very exciting. And then if you climb up to the top of it, inside you get to jump 50 feet to the ground, which is in a controlled descent or semi controlled descent. We'll see. That, I'll, I'll be the first to figure out if it actually works or not. Uh, then we have um, three big rides um, that are made in Italy and um, and of course the mini golf, as well as the kids play area. So it's it's pretty exciting, and uh, we get to theme the whole thing to, to krakens. We've invented these cool characters called gruffles, which are um, the good pirates, sort of a Robin Hood of the pirate uh, clan. Um, they rob from the bad pirates and gave to the people. And they're not humans, but they're not animals. They're somewhere in between. They're this wonderful motley crew of uh, characters, and they'll be featured through the park. When I first started, I was my biggest frustration was that nobody would tell me anything. We had to figure everything out on our own. And so I was determined that someday when we got um, secure enough and, and knew enough to actually teach something, that we would share our secrets with the outside world. And so w once a year, or we open our workshop uh, for two workshops where we invite people. And we've had people from literally all over the world come to learn our techniques. One is a sign workshop where we, we talk a lot about our CNC routing and finishing techniques. And then the other one is a full-blown sculpture workshop where we help uh, people come weld and wire and sculpt and do all these crazy things that we do on a smaller scale, but, but all the same techniques. And we tour them through our existing projects and they get to be in our shop for three days while we have this crazy stuff going on at the same time. So it's, I really enjoy that, sharing what we know. And it's one of the few places in the world where people can actually learn this stuff. I love the whole process. I love, uh, I love being there at the beginning of a project and, and you know, it's exciting and, and you get crazy ideas and you just, you know, you go as wild as you can. And sometimes, uh, you know, if you're lucky, by the end of the project, it's still that wild, it's still that crazy. I mean, the, the, the project we're working on right now, it, just, it makes me laugh every time. You no, know, at the end of the day, well, even at lunch hour, I have to, I have to take a couple of minutes the beginning of lunch just to stop and look around and see what we've done. Because it's just, it's ridiculous, right? And the, the idea that we can make a living doing this is, it's just phenomenal. It's hard to pick something that I don't enjoy about this. My favorite part is that I can't explain it to other people because it's such a unique job that you can't tell people what it is. Most of the people in my family still can't really grasp what it is I do, uh, which is pretty cool. Uh, the best part is how you can turn something that's just fun into an experience. So when we do theme parks, if you just put rides there, it's fun. But if you add all the stuff that we're doing, any theming, uh, it turns it to an experience, and that really, that's what makes a memory for people. Uh, like Disneyland, it's its not just rides, it's the whole, uh, it encompasses everything else. So.
that's the coolest part. My favorite part of the job is my coworkers because they're all so fun and creative and exciting. And I've never worked at the kind of job where you can have so much community and so much fun together. So that's awesome. Yeah. Uh, it's a good crew, yeah. to be honest. It's fun. So. And, and there's variety. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're not always do. stuck doing the same thing over and over again. There's always something new that we're doing. It's always changing. And I mean, just the environment is fun. So, it's just nice work. It's just a little bit laid back and ridiculous. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> it kind of makes us feel like we're able to feel that we're really back and ridiculous because what we do is kind of silly in itself so yeah it's just, it's just chill oh i'm dressed up as the color purple which is one of the colors of the wind for pocahontas i'm yellow as in the yellow part of the rainbow <laughs> I should think it's obvious. <laughs> you don't know. Um, this is Pocahontas. And she's one of the colors of the wind. And blue. Yeah. We're colors. We're colors of the wind. Did you not know that? Okay, Kendra was yellow. No, we're not, not rainbows. We're just, Pocahontas does not have rainbows. <laughs> Unless. No. And she. <laughs> Uh, we share our, our our projects in a variety of ways. One is um, I, I write for magazines. We enter competitions, which we won a whole lot of times. And it's, uh, probably our most popular way is, is I write a blog. Every day I feature some crew member or some project we're working on and um, sort of give a peek behind the scenes of what we're doing. And so our blog is followed by Website. If you go to that, imaginationcorporation.com, and then click on blog or journal, then you will see what we're up to every day. We have between uh, 10 and 20 people working for us at any one time, depending on the size of projects that we have on the go. And the challenge, of course, is to get 20 people to, to do work that looks like one style. And so we, have, of course, have a core team, which doesn't change. They, in turn, train other people. but. If we're doing a, a boat, for instance, which has multiple boards, we'll get one guy to carve one board and, and then they'll switch. So that the board, it looks, you don't see a pattern in the carving. So, because everyone does have their own unique style. I can pick it out, but by carefully blending and, and determining where your seams go or switching as you go, um, they're very, very good at making it look like it came from one hand. Our specialty that we've developed, or what we're famous for, even if people don't know what they're looking at, is texture. And texture, we purposely carve in. In fact, we've figured out ways to program our machine to, to really add a lot of texture that makes everything look handmade and it makes it look authentic because there's no straight lines in nature. With our texture, the way to bring it out is we've developed a technique um, mixing our own glazes with our paints that we, we put base colors on and then we do a layer of glazes starting with the lightest and working forward to the darkest and by rubbing it off, again our team is very skilled at it, initially not too hard and harder as you get through the colors so that all these different layers of color show through at the end um, in a very cool way that, that looks authentic but is actually pretty wild. We're currently booked into 2016 and um, our projects, including this, and we have a phase two of the, the Cultus Lake project, which is a, a, a big roller coaster and um, a, a, a pendulum ride and a, a, a spinning coaster. We do all the theme work in amongst those um, and fitting it into the existing project. Uh, we're doing some repairs and stuff where we have to bash stuff out. And then we have um, the Maritime Museum of Vancouver. We're looking at a very exciting a good sized project there and and then we have um, some smaller projects that we have to shoehorn in somewhere including uh, building the, the world famous and elusive Ogopogo um, and our version of that which is very exciting. That's that's a matter of 
daily discussion almost. We really love what we're doing now. Um, we build uh, small theme parks, you know, um, theme parks with budgets and you know one million dollars, five million dollars, eight million dollars. Uh, which, you know, a million dollars is a lot of money, but for a theme park, that's, that's not very much money. So we build small theme parks, and that allows us to do, um, to do what we do. I, you know, I can get my hands dirty, my father can, can come out here and weld and stuff like that. You know, if we were to take on a um, larger project, you know, a $20 million project, uh, our job descriptions would have to change. And um, right now we work basically out of our backyard, and you couldn't do that on a larger project. So we like the smaller projects, um, and we go all the way down to, to making individual signs. Um, so we're pretty happy with, with where we're at, really. Um, I see us in the future doing <clears throat> not necessarily bigger projects, but different different sorts of projects. Uh, I could see us doing uh, themed environments in museums. I could see us doing um, I don't who knows, right? The, the sky is the limit. But uh, but in terms of our style and and our process, I'm very happy with with what we're doing. There's nobody. Um, certainly nobody in Canada doing anything like what we're doing. So it's nice to be in a niche. As we work, I do a whole variety of jobs. I wear many hats. I, I get to be boss, which is, um, I try and make it non-threatening and very enjoyable. Uh, I, I get to be designer. Uh, I, I lead the team, although each day the team is very capable and manages themselves to a large degree. Um, they use the term um, seagulling, which uh, is a fun way of describing that they're going along merrily and then I'll, I'll tweak it just a teeny bit. I can't help myself, I do it all the time. Um, but um, I guess I get to sort of make sure that everybody's on the same path as we go down this crazy road.